Stegel, and this is another Nature Notes here at Schmeekly Reserve. I'm also a practicum student. Today's awesome animal we'll be learning about is the Northern Flying Squirrel. So what's really awesome about the Northern Flying Squirrels, um, they are here at Schmeekly Reserve along with the Southern Flying Squirrels. They can both be found here, but today I'll be focusing specifically on the Northern Flying Squirrel. So let's start off with talking about range, where you can find the northern flying squirrels. So you can find them in Canada, Alaska, Oregon, Washington, California, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, of course, um, and there's a lot more. But if you think of specifically the northern states, and if you look closely here where you see that highlighted in green, that's where you can find the northern flying squirrels. So their habitat is focused in dense um, coniferous forests and also deciduous forests. They can be mixed too, so they have a good idea for habitat. Mostly northern though. So now to figure out the difference between northern and southern flying squirrels, a good indicator is size. So I'm going to show this picture here. Of course you can't exactly tell the size of the squirrel by this. But if you see a southern flying squirrel, they're going to be a bit smaller, where the northern has to be a little bit larger so they can take those harsh winters. So they can be from sizes from 10 inches all the way to 12 inches. So they can be pretty large creatures. Now this picture here um, gives a good demonstration of what they look like when they are flat, so when they're in flight. So they have these really large eyes that they need because they're nocturnal species. So I need to be able to see well in the dark. Now they also have these really nice claws that you can see here and maybe even in the front, which these claws help them climb trees like it's no problem, like they're Superman. Um, they also have a flattened tail, which you can see here, which helps them in gliding. Um, another good key indicator for telling the difference between southern and northern is the, top's, the top color of their fur is going to look a little bit similar. Uh, with that cinnamon brown color, but their bellies are going to be more of a gray. And now if you say if you think of petting a cat or a dog that has thick fur, if you go to pet that animal down by their skin, their color of their hair might be a little bit different. Well, it's the same kind of concept with a flying squirrel. If you were able to pet, which I would not suggest, but if you were able to touch one on their bellies, once you get closer to their fur, it's going to be that bright white, but on that outer layer, it's going to be more of a gray color. So that's also a really good key indicator for the difference between northern and southern flying squirrels. So we'll put this down, and we'll look at them in flight. So this is a real picture of a northern flying squirrel in flight. So sometimes it is harder to tell um, if you can see here by that white belly. Um, there is a mix between that gray and that white, so it's not always the best key indicator to figure out which one's northern and southern, but by knowing the region you're in, it's going to be really helpful to figure out the species. So like I said, they are nocturnal and they're active throughout the entire year. They don't go into hibernation at all, so you can see them year-round, and they're very, very social, so they're kind of like us, us people. We always like to communicate and be around others or doing something very social well. If you can relate that to um, northern flying squirrels, they're just the same. They like to be in large pairs. So what that means is when breeding season comes around, sometimes they'll mix from nest to nest and kind of go hang out with some other buddies or maybe some other family members, which is really cool. At one time, you can see um, eight or more adults in one nest along with juveniles, which is a crazy thought to imagine. But they're very social. They don't want to be alone. They want to be out with other uh, flying squirrels, too. Um, they do breed from March to May. So we had just about finished that breeding season because it's going to end about in the beginning of May. So you might soon be able to see a little baby northern flying squirrels here in Schmeekly, but also a possibility of southern. So it's a great place to be here at Schmeekly Reserve looking for the different species because we have both of them here. Also for their diet, which is really interesting, they like fungi, they like acorns, and sometimes they'll even eat seeds and nuts depending on what they're interested in that day. So they have a wide variety of um, foods and diets just like we do too. 
Well, thanks for joining in on learning about Northern Flying Squirrels for Nature Notes. Have a great day.